Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for your host this evening, Pax Sasani! Welcome to the comedy mixtape with Pax Asadi! <laughs> brown people make some noise, brown people? <laughs> Bro, this show is unreal. This is why this show is so important to me. This is why this show is so important to me. I started comedy 11 years ago. That's when I started stand-up. And there was like three brown comedians, four, five, barely any of us, right? And when I would watch television, I would see barely any brown comedians on TV. And now, we're doing a television show where there is a whole lineup of brown comedians that are gonna be on TV and are gonna inspire the next generation of brown comedians who watch them and they go, hey, I wanna make other people happy and I wanna make them laugh. Isn't that amazing? Yes? <laughs> it's amazing. I'm excited, this is really important to me. That's why I wanted to do this show. That's why I put this show on, because it means so much to me. Also, it's a huge paycheck and Daddy's excited to renovate his kitchen. <laughs> I'm gonna get a smeg fridge. <laughs> <laughs> answer, answer this question, guys. Is this an audience of people that remember playing on the street with their friends? Yeah? I feel like that's disappearing, yeah? It's disappearing, right? It scares me. It scares me that it's disappearing. My kids don't play on the street. They're just on their screens. They're just on their iPads. They don't go out on the street, play with the kids that are on our street that are the same age as them. And it scares me, right? Because we played on the street and we hung out with our friends with no adults around. And it was, it, we learned things, right? We, with our little society of children, we figured things out. We learned things together. The streets taught us things, right? The streets, they're important. Oh, this is making me sound way more thug than I actually am. <laughs> the streets raise me, dog. <laughs> it's, not like it's not like that. It's not like that. I grew up in Glenfield. And, um, <laughs> but it worries me. It worries me, right? And I get it. The world is scary. There are bad things in the world. And yes, we see those bad things in the world constantly because of social media, right? They're always on our timeline. So we're more scared. We're more scared. I get it. But what would you rather? An elderly man in a robe seducing your children? Or would you rather your children think Jake Paul is talented? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I take the pedophile every time. <laughs> every time. Like, bad things happen to us. We just figured it out. I remember one time I was on the street playing with my friends and it was, I lived on a street with all brown kids, right? There was one white kid, we let him hang out because he had a Tamagotchi. And, <laughs> and one of my friends goes, gee, I wish I had a car, eh? If I had a car, I would get you KFC every day. <laughs> and I was like, honestly, that would be mean. And then Brandon was like, I like Nando's. <laughs> and we're like, shut up, Brandon, you don't get an opinion. You're only here because of your pixelated pit. Now give us a go. <laughs> and in that moment, right in that moment, there's an old, beat up Nissan Bluebird sedan right next to us. The hubcaps are missing, there's scratches on it, the wing mirror's hanging off. The driver's seat window winds down, and a dude sticks his head out of the window and goes, hey kids, I'll take you to KFC if you want. <laughs> Do you know how we dealt with that situation? My friend next to me just looked at him and goes, ooh, piss off, I don't want to go to KFC in your piece of shit car. <laughs> <laughs> and he drove off and we never saw him again. We beat pedophilia with bullying. <laughs> Kids don't learn that anymore! Yeah. 
All right. Are you guys ready to get the show on the road? Yes! That's the energy I want to hear.